57 years ago, a young man in his early 20s brought together a few of his friends and founded a service club called the Kinsman. Tonight, we're meeting the founder of the Kinsman, Mr. Harold A. Rogers. We had very vivid dreams, great imaginations. We pictured a great organization. We'd organize a Canadian service club. And fortunately, many young men have taken the leadership of the organization, devoted their talents and enthusiasm, and built the organization we have now. Our clubs all across Canada devoted their service and interest to what we call our community's greatest need. Community is not where you live. It is not the perimeter of your town. Canada is our community. We are one community in this country, period. If you look throughout the country, you'll see kin signs in large cities and small towns. And kin is there to fill that community's greatest need. Everything that builds a stronger community and in many cases fills the needs that social services and communities can't do, uh, the Kinsmen and Connect Clubs find ways to raise funds and help people that fall through the cracks. Each community or each club gets to define what that need is. We Kinsmen built these purchase parks and now we're enjoying them along with the rest of the community. Everywhere you go throughout Canada, I could go and call someone from a kin club and you would be welcomed and you would, they would invite you into your home and you would meet new people and it's a great experience. La communauté, dans mes pensées, est famille. Ça veut pas dire que c'est ta famille propre, c'est tes voisins, tes collègues, des amis, des personnes que tu connais pas. Cela représente pour moi la communauté. If I can make this world just a little bit better by giving something of myself, why wouldn't I? I was very active and well, I tried to do my part for three years in the uh, big war. That, that's not the last war, the big war, 1914, 1918. Yeah. And I came home to a strange city, Hamilton, Ontario, and after a year or so, I discovered that I'd lost the comradeships, the fellowships I'd known in war effort, and uh, felt the need of it in civilian life. And so I stopped a young chap on the street and suggested we start a service club, and this is the result. So he tried to join Rotary, but sadly, Rotary have a rule where only one person per trade is, was allowed in at the, that time, 1920. So they told Hal, sorry, you can't join. The first meeting was February 20th, 1920, in the Namking Cafe in Hamilton. One of those young men was Trevor Thompson, who's my grandfather. Hal and Trevor were the two keys, because Hal was selling the idea, Trevor was the workhorse. We had a special niche in the market for young men to go and join, and because the club had these people of that age, it was young, it was vibrant, it was exciting, and we just naturally attracted people. It was originally the Hamilton Young Men's Business Club, Men who wanted to be in business, wanted to learn how to be in business, how to converse in business, and at the same time, how to help the community they lived in. After the first meeting, they were sitting in uh, Hal's home and his dad was reading a book from Mark Twain in the other room, and uh, he called out to them that uh, the book he was reading mentioned the Kinsman Hotel, and that seemed like a pretty good name between uh, my grandfather and Hal and uh, a couple of other people in the room. They said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And the uh, Kinsman Club of Hamilton was born. And then one or two moved to different locations, Montreal, Vancouver, and they started clubs there. So before you knew it, we had 600 clubs across the country. We expanded very, very quickly over a short period of time.
people donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can need up to eight units of blood a week. Or that an organ transplant recipient may also need blood. <laughs> or that you can help someone finally come home. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. Join Canada's Lifeline and book now at blood.ca. We found out Ben had a congenital heart defect when I was about 24, 25 weeks pregnant. They scanned his heart and they made the decision that day that we'd be going to Edmonton. We had to then try and find where to stay. How do we afford it? That was the big question. We were approved for funding from Telemiracle before heading off to Edmonton. I felt like we were taken care of by people that we didn't even know. Thank you for helping me. Grab your friends and family for Kinsman Radio Bingo. Pick up a six pack of playing cards for only $5 at participating retailers. Weekly jumping jackpot up to $10,000. $2,000 guaranteed to be won each week. Play Kinsman Radio Bingo Saturday at 6.30 on GX94. I'd like to tell you this, the milk for bread and how that started. Kim and Kanetz are young people in a working service club. In other words, we try to find the need and then we ask the public to join us in answering that need. And that's what happened with Milk for Britain. It started because Lord Walton of the British Ministry of Food broadcast on the radios of the United States and Canada. We didn't have television then, of course. And he said exactly this. Won't you people in the Americas do without cream in your coffee just one day a week so little children here can have milk? Well, because we had a national organization, not doing too big a job, but still underway, I phoned Ottawa next morning and told them I'd heard the broadcast. We'd send 78,000 quarts of milk next week. And we did. And Britain, I wish you could read some of the letters I still have. The little children saying, won't you please tell Canada thanks for all the milk they've sent us. My name is Ian Brown, and I'm a recipient of the Milk for Britain campaign. The importance of the Milk for Britain campaign cannot be underestimated because uh, children were starving in England. The milk uh, helped to uh, keep many of us alive. I remember my mother uh, lining up in the long lineups uh, with her ration slips. She was rationed, we were rationed with how much we could get of this and that, mainly milk and butter. The Canadian Prime Minister at the time, he started uh, asking service clubs if they could help and the, uh, the one that responded to the help was, of course, the kinsman. The original request, uh, when Hal Rogers, when they asked him how the kinsman could help, and he said, he didn't even blink. He said, we'll send a million quarts over. <laughs> and all the children, like myself, were no longer malnutrition. Uh, we were well fed, but I'm just one of millions of children, I'm sure, in England who were the recipients of the Milk for Britain campaign. And of course, we're most grateful for the kinsmen at that time to help us. The National Convention's an amazing event. National Convention to me is like a family reunion. We get together to celebrate the total dollars donated to our communities across the country, the total hours donated. To really catch that lightning in a bottle that each and every one of us has. It fills our cup, it refuels us in order to get us to share ideas. You're sitting down at a supper and meal, you're talking about a variety of things listening to which projects have been really great, what has gone on. We learn from each other and we get to celebrate with each other and then you make lifelong friendships. Everyone has a new idea, a different way of doing something. It keeps our association strong. But it's also a chance for us to plan for the future, to plan for the upcoming year and for years down the road. Kin Canada has a focus on education, 
and training. Kin Canada prides itself on the personal development available in Kin. Kin education is a vital part of keeping members involved and engaged in what's going on. Across the country, in some districts, they have a Kin College, which is great for new members as well as older members to learn about Kin, how things work in this association, and how to be a member. KinU is something we developed over the last couple of years, which gives our members an opportunity to do online learning at their own pace. You can sign in, get all kinds of information and programs to better yourself, whether it be in business practices, whether it be in conflict resolution, or simply just how to run a project. It helps them to develop skills that are necessary to take on some of the roles that they might aspire to within the association. And the skill sets that you learn there are easily transferable to the workplace. And if we build strong leaders within our association, we will be able to build strong clubs, and strong clubs will do amazing things in their community. The Hal Rogers Endowment Fund, um, also known as HREF, runs the Kin Canada Bursary Program. So Kin Canada Bursaries provides bursaries to post-secondary students who not only demonstrate a financial need, but also give back to their communities in their own ways. It's not uncommon for us to hear members talk about things that they weren't able to do before they became a member to things that they can do. That is a great formula for success and a great way to become a very well-rounded individual. Partners are an important part of Kin. The biggest national partnership is the one with uh, Cystic Fibrosis. Kin Canada and Cystic Fibrosis Canada was formed in the 1960s, largely through the efforts initially of a gentleman named Bill Skelly, a Kin member who heard about the plight of children with cystic fibrosis, which in those days was particularly bleak. At that time, the age um, that the child was expected to live to was five. The money that Kin Canada has raised has gone to research and the average age is now going to be 55 years old. And a lot of that can be attributed to the dollars that have been raised through Kin Canada, through Kin members and clubs across the country that have contributed almost $50 million to cystic fibrosis research and clinical care and other programs. Kinsmen and Kinets right across the country can be really proud of the difference that they've made in helping us advance. Someone with leukemia can need up to eight units of blood a week. That's why we need donors every day. There are lots of reasons to donate blood. Canadian Blood Services. Book now at blood.ca. Aiden, get dressed. <laughs> Buddy, no, 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 no. <sighs> Almost there. Lift your leg. Yeah. Aiden, get <laughs> dressed. For someone with MS, living in a body that doesn't listen to you some days, get dressed, can be an act of greatness. Life can change in an instant. How you respond makes all the difference. To lift one takes the hands of many. The courage to respond is within all of us. With you by our sides, we are all stars. We had just moved here and it was just a sand pit, everywhere was sand. And I had just seen Brian, he was trying to get from point A to point B across the yard, and I seen him and he just had tears rolling down his cheeks just because he couldn't physically do it. You can't wheel through sand in a manual chair, you can't. I didn't want to rely on somebody else to do the chores for me, and um, once I got this chair, I realized what I can do with it. It's allowed him to now expand the farm and really fulfill his dream. I thank you for helping me. Donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. 
That's why we need donors every day. There are lots of reasons to donate blood. Canadian Blood Services. Book now at blood.ca. Another partnership is Canadian Blood Services. Last year they asked Kin Canada to donate 740 pints of blood. It's in us to give, and so we ask all members of Kin Canada to either support through blood donation a Canadian Blood Services site or hold a blood donor clinic. And in true fashion, Kin Canada came across and donated over 1,300 pints. Really looking forward to having you on Telemerical 44. It is going to be a great 20 hours in Olympus, so we cannot do it without you at home. Telemiracle is a jumbled up expression of love and happiness all in one. Telemiracle is a 23 hour telethon. And people phone in and make pledges and we raise money to be able to give back to the people of Saskatchewan. We help pay for medical equipment and travel for medical expenses. It takes about 500 or so kin volunteers to make Telemiracle. I know several recipients of funds from Telemiracle and it has impacted their life greatly. I had a liver transplant about a year and a half ago. They treated us like, uh, like a family member. It was awesome. But I have a co-worker who, who has a son. He went through a, a really nasty form of cancer. When he found out I was in the Kinsman, he said that Telemiracle helped them. and. It meant, a, it meant a lot to him and to be part of something where you have a co-worker and just a little boy and that you, you did something that mattered to them. This is a privilege to be here. And we enjoy doing it every year. It makes you feel so glad and proud to be kin. To give back to people that are in the greater need is the least I can do. I think it is what makes us who we are and it showcases how amazing all these people in Saskatchewan are. And then of course in each district they have their own special projects and here in District 7 we are partners with the Multiple Sclerosis Society for the past 40 years. Many Kinsmen and Connect clubs and King clubs across Canada do a lot of the social projects as well, whether it's food banks, uh, homeless shelters. Mission is to support women who have young children that are going through different crisis situations. It's a high tea that we sell tickets for and just have a wonderful day wearing crazy hats. We have donated to our local hospital. We have donated money for hockey sweaters. Trappers Festival, we're heavily involved in that. We run the uh, dog sled races. We make a contribution to the festival for uh, youth events. Lucy's Place is the conversion of an old derelict motel into studio apartments to help take people off the streets. Our annual princess ball, which we started out very small to engage little girls and let them have a day of magic that they might not otherwise have. Barbecue Canada, when the American border got closed, the Canadian imports for beef got together and said, let's show the world that Canadian beef is safe. We set a Guinness World Book of Records that year for most burgers served on one day for a barbecue. National Day of Kindness. People come out, you know, have a, a decent breakfast at a cheap price, have some fun, and families can enjoy each other. And some people go and they help buy people groceries or bag groceries. Some people go to Tim Hortons and they're paying for people's coffee. You're just going out and, you know, you're spreading word about kin, but just spreading kindness, making everybody feel a little bit better today. A campus club is a club on campus for the students to get involved and join Kin Canada's organization. I volunteer because I want to make an impact in our community. Our campus club has done lots to do with students dealing with stress and mental awareness. Bake sales, we've helped at Hoops for Hope raising money for cystic fibrosis. Campus club is a great way to explore opportunities within your own community. They like to say we are the future of Kin. They had uh, the century of the flood in, in Manitoba. I, I just remember the, we'd wear our shirts throughout the, the city of, of uh, Winnipeg and people would come up and go, I live here and you came all the way over across the country. And I think one of my fondest memories is that they had uh, a few other groups. Uh, they used to bring the volunteers food 
And so on our second last day, I, I organized all these groups to come to one area and with the families and um, that, was, that was amazing. It was pretty awesome to see all those people there. Well, the Proud to be Canadian tour was uh, an incredibly wonderful uh, moment in time in Kin. We had been given two flags from the Peace Tower in Ottawa, and one began in Victoria, B.C., the other began in Victoria, Newfoundland. Those flags traveled throughout the country to the, all the King Clubs, so we put special borders around Canadian flags so that the children in communities could sign. In the end, we had well over two million signatures of kids. The two Peace Tower flags met simultaneously in uh, Thunder Bay at the Terry Fox Memorial. We had many kin that came from all over the country to Canada day, that day in Ottawa to celebrate and be part of the Proud to be Canadian tour. And if you'd been in the room at one point when all the flags, they had the flags, and they fell down from the rafters in the building, and the roar and applause and the joy, oh, I'm still having the shivers now, uh, that came up from that crowd, there was not a person in that room who was not proud to be Canadian and proud to be Kim. Absolutely. Nous avons une famille spéciale, d'où ce que j'ai rencontré mon jeune copain, il y avait quatre ans. À l'âge d'à peu près neuf ans, son papa a perdu son emploi. Il avait besoin de beaucoup de médicaments et ils se sont approchés à moi et j'ai amené ça au club. Le club a supporté de payer les médicaments. On a été à la pharmacie. Aujourd'hui, ce garçon a 16 ans. Il est très spécial à moi. Um, ça fait seulement un, deux semaines que j'ai eu mon honneur d'être un membre de vie. Et mon petit copain, il était là. Il est venu célébrer avec moi pour me dire merci et pour me dire qu'il est content que nous avons aidé. Nous sommes là pour aider nos amis qui sont subis de la fibrose kystique. The future of the association is very bright. We've got all the right stuff, but we constantly have to pursue doing it better. Our membership needs to grow. We need to take a look at how we're reflecting our communities and does our membership reflect that community? We need to find those projects that make a difference and bring more impact to the people's lives. We need to innovate more. We need to do things that create more opportunities for our members to express how they see their community's needs are. The key ingredients for our success is there in our strategic plan. We talk about innovation. We talk about investing. We talk about impacting. These are the things that are going to be necessary for us to retain our relevance, but also for us to be successful in our next century. Life can change in an instant. How you respond makes all the difference. To lift one takes the hands of many. The courage to respond is within all of us. With you by our sides, we are all stars. Aiden, get dressed. <laughs> Buddy, no, 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 no. Uh, almost there. Look at your leg. Aiden, 
get dressed. For someone with MS, living in a body that doesn't listen to you some days, get dressed, can be an act of greatness. to be Kim? Absolutely. It truly is like a badge of honor that I get to wear every day. I attribute so much of my personal success to the skills and the people I've met through Kin. It's brought me so many friends. My family has just grown so much. So now I have 6,000 family members across this country. You know that all of your proceeds from your events are going back into the community and just being proud to know that every dollar that you raise, you know where it's going and you have a say of where it goes. 100 years! The projects that we work on, the services that we give to our communities, and the calendar that I found in Kin, me fait rentrer, me regarder, and I work still harder than when I started in 1989. I'm happy to be Kinet. It gives you a great feeling in your heart to know that you've made a, a difference in the life of at least one person. Just seeing people smile and having them thank you, it feels good. I'm incredibly proud to be standing here and privileged to know that each and every member of KIN has such a massive impact. I know KIN changes lives because they have changed mine. It's a marvelous feeling, of course. It's a tremendous satisfaction to find that young people all through the years have picked up an idea. Mr. Speaker, this year marks the 100th anniversary of Kin Canada, the late nation's largest all-Canadian service club organization. Since its founding by Hal Rogers in 1920, the association has contributed more than $1 billion to Canadian causes, communities, and individuals in need. You could not visit clubs across this country, see what has been accomplished for the members of the club, but more particularly by those members for their communities, and not have a tremendous thrill that you were a part of it. To give with your heart is a good part of living. Given makes living a beautiful thing. Taking the time to make someone smile goes a long, long way to make living worthwhile. We're families together, making life better.